If the sun does not shine in the morning, if the waters disappear from the sea, if the stars in the heavens should fall from above, I know Jesus. conflict from sea to sea. When it seems the world can stand another minute, I know Jesus will take care of me. He's a mighty God, He created it all, and He knows what the future will be. So come what may, I'll not be afraid, for Jesus will take Let's begin tonight in Psalm, thank you very much, all three of you, Psalm 19, and uh, we'll move around this evening, and we'll let the men come down and join you this evening. Thank you for being in the Lord's house on Wednesday night, summertime, and uh, it's good to be with God's people. I love hearing you sing tonight, love the offertory, and uh, just to be here, that good song right there, Psalm 19. Well, it's, uh, this is my last um, lesson on this subject, and we're going to review just a moment. And then um, I mentioned Sunday. I'm here all the rest. I'm here all the re remainder of the year. I have not missed a Sunday this year. I don't plan to miss a Sunday this year. We'll see how that all works out. I'm not planning on going anywhere. I'll be here, but until September 1st, uh, I have all the various men preaching for us beginning this Sunday. I'll be sitting right there saying amen, and I love it. Please, even our, our friends that are watching, don't read into that. Don't read into that. He's discouraged. He's defeated. Well, duh, sure I am. No, no, I'm on the, I, everything's okay. It's just you, you I, I preach so much to you all the time. I want to give you, these men a great opportunity to preach, and I tell you what, we have many great preachers here, and I'm looking forward to it. So we look forward to uh, this Sunday, um, and uh, as uh, we look forward to John R. Rice preaching Sunday uh, this evening and morning, and then uh, Jane Frank Norris will be preaching Sunday night as well. So those are preachers for you that are new Christians. They're dead and gone for years. If you remember, many weeks ago we began with the mind. Our mind is the computer. Our mind is what needs to be protected. Because whatever we put in here is going to come out. We found out that the mind is divided into three segments, and part of the segment, one segment, is the heart. We found out that, um, Lily, we're glad to have you here. Mrs. Hall's uh, sister from Tennessee. I'm sorry to introduce you. But uh, the mind, we have to protect it. Because we put wrong things in, we're going to get wrong things out. We put evil things in, we put negative things in, we're going to put depression in, negative depression comes out. It, it works that way. Out of the abundance of the heart, 
the mouth speaketh. And so we saw the mind, and we went through many scriptures on the mind. We must protect the mind. Thou will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Whatsoever things are true, lovely, uh, honest, uh, honest and lovely and true and virtuous as any praise, think on these things. Get your mind, my mind as well. Cannot think about COVID all day long. Cannot think about shutdown all day long. Cannot think about how terrible it is all day long. Can't think about Antifa all day long. Can't think about uh, Black Lives Matter and re rebellion and uh, looting. All this. That can't be the source of our life because this here gets affected. We found out that with Alzheimer's, we think so often the first thing to go is memory. That's the last to go. Judgment goes first. And when we begin to make wrong judgment calls, uh, you're going down a path of destruction with your mind. And how important it is that we guard our mind, put a watch on this mind, guard the mind. Now we found out there are two avenues, just two avenues to the mind. Two eyes and two ears. So the next week we spend time with the eyes. And we're going to bring into our mind, our mind is affected by this and this. Not this. This is the outgrowth of this and this and this. The mouth, what proceeds out of the mouth has been buried in the brain. So we say something unkind to another Christian. I don't know where that came from. Oh, yes, you do. It's already been there. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So when you are rude to your wife or your husband and you're rude to your children or your parents, it's already been registered. You saw some other kid thrown a fit. You heard some other kid thrown a fit. You, you've been conditioned that I have my rights, I want this, and so consequently, we fight because our mind has been tainted. So we looked at the mind, week one, we looked at the eyes, week two, the ears, week three, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say, and we saw all the different avenues how our ears can be affected, which affects our mind, and our eyes can be affected, which affects our mind. And today I'm gonna drop us down to this right here, our mouth. And this mouth can be used as a blessing or be used as a hurt. I think most people in the society in which we live in are using it as a hurt. It seems like we have just invaded everyone's lives. Get your mask up, over your nose, stand on your square. We've gone over this and over it. Get on your square. It, 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 it's just way beyond. I was in a city this week and I saw, real nearby here, I saw that it said mask and then the Spanish word for mask. It's great. It's called mascara. <laughs> so I guess we can say, ladies, when you get the paint out, you're putting your mask on. I wonder what it really looks like without the mask, but you look all great tonight. Psalm, let, let's write the verses down. We'll go through many tonight. Psalm 19, verse 14. Let's, let's read the verse together. This is the key tonight. Psalm 19, Psalm 19, 14. Ready, begin. Let the words of my mouth If our words are not acceptable to those around us, they're not acceptable to God. And God is the one that makes the, we, we need to meet his criteria. Let the words of my mouth be acceptable. Our words need to be acceptable in his presence. Turn with me and would you mark that verse? We may come back to it. Would you look at Psalm 141, please? Psalm 141. 150 Psalms, and there's, we're, we're in Psalm 141. Ah, it's taken me a long time to get there. 141, here we go. Psalm 141, and then let's take verse number three. Let's read verse three together. 
Ready? Begin. Set a watch. I think that would be a good prayer. This verse and verse uh, chapter 19, verse uh, 14, every day. My words need to be acceptable words. My words, God, I, I want you to, that, 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 that I will set a watch, O oh Lord, before my mouth. Not that God does it, I have to do this. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke. The book of Luke, and if you'll go with me to chapter 6. So we have the first uh, verse that we looked at tonight. What is it? Psalm what? 19, verse Psalm 19, 14. Did you write it down? I'd like you to write it down tonight. This is not like a Sunday service. It's a class hour. Uh, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Where is that found? Psalm 19, verse 14. That's, That's Psalm 19, 14. Anybody here born in 1914? I'm just taking a look. Brother Bertram, God bless you. Brother Bertram was 1914, and um, you'll be hearing him preach this month too. And then we looked at Psalm 141, verse 3. Psalm, say it together. Psalm 141, verse 3. And it says, set a watch, O my Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. God will do that, but we must do it too. And now in Luke chapter 6, maybe perhaps in your devotion time, Bible time tomorrow, you could look at these three verses, be three great verses to learn to memorize over the next few weeks. We're going to get to the latter part of the verse, but let's go verse 45, and we'll begin where it says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart. Let's read it together. Ready? Begin. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. Here it is. Let, let's say that one more time, that last little phrase. Ready? For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. It, 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 whatever here is going to come out here. So I need to put words in here through my eyes and through my ears that are acceptable to God. I don't really know uh, if Doctors do this anymore. I imagine they do. I haven't been to very many doctors lately. But, but you know, when I, was, I, I remember when the doctor would come to the school and goes, okay, stick your tongue out. And a doctor would look and examine your tongue. Does anybody remember that? Does that, is, does, we know that doctors do that. It really wearies me that old people know, but you young people if, if your tongue is white, you've got some poison in there. You gotta, that, that tongue needs to stay pink. And if it's changing colors on you, there's something wrong with your health. The doctor would examine a person's health so often by starting, say, ah, give me your tongue, put it out there, let's see it. Our spiritual life can be gauged by our tongue as well. The mouth, our words are so important. Uh, Solomon's writing his boy, Rehoboam. And he wrote him a book called Proverbs, 31 chapters. And if you jot this down, 176 times he said to his son, words, tongue, lip, speech, mouth. In 31 chapters, 176 times. Now, you count that yourself in speech because I I don't do it the computer way. I literally go through Strong's and Chords and I counted all of them. 176 times, he said, son, you better get your mouth in order. You better get your tongue in order. Turn with me to Ecclesiastes. It follows the book of Proverbs. Uh, Psalms, Proverbs, then Ecclesiastes. And I'll have you not turn very much anymore. I'll uh, give you some things here. Ecclesiastes chapter number 
uh, uh, chapter 5. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Let us read the first part of verse number 2. Uh, before, and we get to the word God, before God. Let's read it together. Ready? Begin. Be not rash with thy mouth. And let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Guard the heart through the eye gate, through the ear gate, because what spills out of the mouth is coming from the heart, and the heart has been affected from the eyes and the ears. That's why the psalmist said, I'll set no wicked thing before mine eyes. That's why Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes. I think it's Job 38, but I might be, not to look upon a maid to lust after her. We, have, we must guard, oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. I tell you, in my prayer life, I try to always say, and I've heard you've said it before, so I won't go into deep, but I, Lord, I give you today my mind. I give you my eyes, I give you my ears, I give you my mouth, I give you my hands, I give you my feet, I give you my heart, take my life, and I have the song, and I have it, take my life, and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. I, I want God to have control of all of this, because when I take control, I am gonna destroy my life and the life of those that I love so very much. Look what he says in chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes. A time, verse 7, to rend, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a kind time to speak. What kind of words did Eve use? The very first conversation that we know of between two human beings, what, what words did she say? What kind of words caused that man, well, he saw something. He saw something that looked pleasant to the eyes. She saw something, and then she said, Let, let's, let's go ahead and take this, Adam. And he listened to his wife. Those were disloyal words. Those were disobedient words. But it all began when the eye gate and the ear gate was affected, and they began to speak some things, and all of a sudden, he found out, and he noticed, he said, we, we are naked before God. We sin. I think of those 10 spies. Two came back. They saw things. They heard things. They heard those giants. They saw those giants, but they didn't report on that. They saw the grapes of escrow. And they said, it's a beautiful land. It's well, well, it's a walled city. It's going to be great. This is exactly what we need. It's already built for us. They saw an opportunity. They saw vegetation. They saw a city that could be conquered. And Tim came back and said, we're like grasshoppers. They're going to eat us alive. They eat people. Well, that was not true. But why? They put it in their mind how bad it was. They put it in their mind through their eye and through their ear. What kind of things do we bring into our mind today? through our eye gate and our ear gate. Joseph had 10 brothers. Those 10 brothers went back and with their words for 20 some years, they lied to their father. Those boys would be known as liars. Goliath's words were intimidating words. Haman's words were cruel words. He was a heathen. The prophet's words were rejected words and mocked words. Nehemiah's word was a words of courage. Let us rise up and build. Let's do something about it. Positive words. Joshua and Caleb were courage, courageous words. Jesus' words were forgiving words. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's been said that a loose tongue will always get its owner in tight places. We're going to have to guard the tongue with what we say. The surgeon, the surgeon came to the young man, and he was young. And he said to him, young man, uh, your tongue is going to be removed. You're very young, but you have no option. 
If you want to live, we must remove your tongue. The cancer has got it so, uh, is captured it, we must remove it. I had an aunt that was a preacher's wife for over 50 some years and cancer invaded her life. And the same thing happened to her, her tongue was removed. And you cannot speak without a tongue. The surgeon said, son, you're on the table. In just a few moments, we're going to put you under where you're going to be sleeping, and I'll perform the surgery. When you wake up, you'll never speak again. He said, young man, would you like to say one last statement or word or sentence? It will be the last you'll ever say. That young man realized that I'll never sing again. I'll never speak again. Now, he knew it, but it just became reality on that table. And he said, can I, can I sing it for you, what I want to say? When this poor lisping, stammering tongue Lie silent in the grave. I'll sing a nobler, sweeter song. I'll sing in thy power to save. He sang for that doctor and those doctors and nurses that day. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge, lose all their guilty stains. Amen. Curtis Hudson made that song famous. It was a famous old song. But he made the winning side, and there is a fountain. Because he was dying, he was now at 91 pounds. I'll never forget, he became so, so thin. And his eyes were sunken in. At 61 years of age, he said, I'd like to sing. And his voice would crack. We have it on the radio, Brother Warner, once in a while. There is a fountain filled with blood. I can hear him singing it right now. This tongue can be used to sing, to teach, to preach, and can encourage. But it can also be very hurtful. I wanted to go through months ago. I, I had it all studied out for tonight, and it just I wouldn't have time. But I looked in the Bible, and I've looked up all these words, and I have, and I won't go through the references. But listen to these words when God speaks about the tongue. There's an angry tongue, a blasphemous tongue, a bitter tongue, a backbiting tongue, a despised tongue, tongue, an enticing tongue, an exhortating tongue, a faithful, a faith a tongue, a flattering tongue, a false tongue, a feigned, which means you fake, a foolish tongue, a fearful tongue, a forward, forward uh, tongue, which is crooked. It's not straight. A good tongue, a gracious tongue, a grievous tongue, a hateful tongue, a lying tongue, a malicious tongue, a naughty tongue, a proven tongue, a pure tongue, a prayerful tongue, a righteous tongue, a, a, a reproved tongue, a sure tongue, snared tongue, smooth tongue, sweet tongue, soft tongue, truthful tongue, vain tongue, wholesome tongue, upright tongue. We live in a day where we use our tongue and our other tongue. Our fingers. I, I have never figured out how to use a computer. One day, if the Lord tarries and I die, it will be able to be said, I never used the inter internet one time to hurt someone. I don't know how this happened. I don't know where it happened. I wasn't smart when I became the pastor here, but I made a vow with God that I would never write to anyone a letter, a note that I would not want published. I would never write anyone a note. I just want to tell you a piece of my mind. I don't know why you, I never did it, and I'm not going to do it. And I've not had a conversation like that. I'm not going to do it. People come and go, and pastor, you have it down there as well. Any pastor is watching, people come and go, but no one can say deliberately, Pastor tried to be hurt me. 
Now, some folks may think that. I, I'm not going to use my life and this tongue and my fingers that God gave me to type something that will hurt someone else. I don't care about researching everybody else's life. Every time something comes out on the internet, I know because before long, my, it just takes moments. It literally takes moments. And preachers, they're the best in all the world, but some of you dear preachers must just live on the computer because I know when my phone starts lighting up or, or someone's sending me text messages that something's out there right now. Why would a preacher want to stay on the internet and why would you want to mind someone else's business? I'm certain I'm dating myself and I don't believe I ever had this happen to me, but I went to school, public school, and I remember that era where if you said something and your mother did not appreciate it, your father, I'm gonna wash your mouth out with soap. Imagine now, they call Child Protection Services on you. Of course, they believe in spanking and all that business. My dad would not tolerate, I'd tattle him, I said, he would not tolerate it. Jack, keep your own life right. You mind Jack's business. Man, I had such a hard time raising those girls. I tried to get them to behave, and my dad would have got on my page, it would have been a lot easier for them. But he said, Jack, I want you to take care of Jack. Don't worry about Judy and Jill. You take care of Jack. And in life, ladies and gentlemen, why are we minding everyone else's business? I don't know what other Christians do, but I, the big thing nowadays is they're hiding something. Who would ever want to do that? Our mayor, last mayor was a lawyer, and I said to the mayor and the chief of police, probably five years ago, six years ago, you must think we have a terrible church. I'm calling the police on, I, it's, uh, something happens, I, I immediately report it. And I recall what they both said, no pastor, you have a great church and it's a large church, but you're dealing with people and we're in a messed up society. I don't know anybody that deliberately, now maybe there are, that would wanna cover sin. I want to report whatever I have to report, but then I don't want to be the broadcasting. And, and do you know something? Let me just, I'm glad I'm going to say this. Do you know that as a pastor of a church, most of the time, though we d try to deal with sin properly and within the assembly, legally nowadays, you, you've got to be careful what you say to the assembly. Do you know that I cannot tell you who has COVID? Do you know I don't have the right to tell anybody else who has COVID? And I've found out some people through the last month or so that have it, and I have a small, short, short, short list, probably under 10. But you're not going to get that on me. I'm not going to tell you who it is because I'm not supposed to tell it. Ah, he's covering sin. No, I'm not covering sin. I'm covering COVID. We're going to have to be careful to slander people and hurt people. I recall a member here 30, almost 40, probably 40 years ago, uh, someone trying to engage him in a problem, and he said, look, I'm not part of the problem, and I'm not part of the solution, so leave me alone. I never forgot when he said that. I'm not part of the problem. I'm not part of the solution, so leave me alone. Stop being the policeman for everyone else's life. That's what, that's what this COVID thing has done. Your mask is a sixteenth of an inch too, too low. Get it up there. Meanwhile, every restaurant you go to, they can have dogs there sneezing and coughing and barking all over you, walking past you, shaking themselves and fur flying everywhere. That's real healthy. 
But we got our mask on, and I saw a dog reaching with the mask on. Ay, 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 ay. Some suggestions, I'd like to write them down, then we're out of time. One, silence your words. Silence your words. There are too many busybodies today, too many people that want to talk. Set a watch on your mouth, on your fingers. Silence your words. Secondly, sweet words. Sweet words. Kind words. Respectful words. Encouraging words. What's the first words? What kind of words were they? Silence. What, what kind of words? Silence your words. Two, what's the second one? Sweet words. Three, spiritual words. What's the first one? Silence. What's the second one? What's the third? Spiritual words. Even in our churches, we need to have spiritual words. Spiritual words, scriptural words. I can recall in our church some old guys. I mean, they were old, late 70s, 80s, old guys, and they talk about the, the uh, oh, here, the love of God. You know, it reminds me that God's love constrains us. And they quote scripture all the time in just their conversation. Oh, the love of God. I know we quote it, boys, a lot, John 3, 16, for God so loved. I went down a journey in my Bible time about love, and I'm not talking about arrogant guys. It's just a way of life. Are our words spiritual words? Are they scriptural words? Number next, are they sound words? First, second, Timothy and Titus speak about sound words. We're not all over the map. Supplication words. Men, women. Are we praying or do we spend, do we spend more time on social media than we do pray in prayer. You know, this, this, I can't stress enough, this is such an urgent moment. I don't mean to fear you, but the pressure's on right now. Huge. Huge. Big time, huge, right here at the North Valley Baptist Church. The government doesn't want us to have church. It's not a light thing right now. I beg young people, you need the church. I beg young college age young people, I beg, beg, beg the church. These are days of prayer. When you have an entire county where you're from, an entire county, what is there, seven, eight, nine, ten million people down there? Where an entire county you cannot go to church. And I heard it with my own ears where the mayor of that city said to a pastor, we're going to shut your power and your water off at your church. You continue to go to church. That's communism. When a Supreme Court says Amendment 1 does not work for churches, read it for yourself. You don't have to go to get a law degree from Harvard. No law. We have the right to assemble. I was praying for our governor this past week, thinking about the poor, the poor, poor fella. He, 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 I said it Sunday, I thought, he's, he's undoubtedly never been to Sunday school a day of his life. He's never been to a youth camp. I know I said it Sunday. Never been to a youth camp. He's never been to vacation Bible school. Never been to a youth conference. I wonder why it doesn't mean anything to him. I'm thinking about sovereign words, which we have a sovereign, we have a God who's King Jesus, sang them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. When you put music from your ear and you're reading it from here and you're singing to God and you're putting it in your heart, you're going to be singing all the time. There's within my heart a melody. A man who speaks, a particular man, 
as it seems like this happens in America right now, when a man speaks in gossip and backbiting, I will promise you 100% of the time the man has a poor relationship with his father. 100% of the time. Now, I'm not saying you don't had a good relationship, but you have to get victory over that failure of your dad. Where he walked out, or the war took him, or death took him, or whatever it may have been, and if you're not careful, you spend your life from bitterness. We must recognize that battle must be won first, or we'll wind up hurting people. We become narcissistic. We become cruel, become hateful. And for us, we, those that are watching tonight, if you're without Christ, the only hope you have is Jesus Christ. He wants to save your soul. He reached down and saved my soul. Fifteen minutes from here. So many years ago, so many decades ago, I have failed him and I've shamed his name I know but he has never failed me tonight you need to while you, whether you're listening online or whether you're here turn to Christ our heads are bowed and eyes are closed our father tonight help us to realize that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh what's in our, our mind we're going to speak it and I pray that as the invitation song is being played, I pray that God, this altar be used for prayer. Brother Cooper comes, the piano's plays. Let's stand to our feet, if you would. The altar is now open if you'd like to come pray. What a convicting message tonight. I remember reading the illustration where a man took a pillow full of feathers and he took it and shook it and the feathers were caught by the wind and he told the young man next to him, he said, those are like words that you speak. Once they're spoken, you never gather them again. God spoke to your heart tonight. Why don't you come and speak to the Lord? The altar is open. What a good night to pray. Wednesday night's prayer meeting night. Like never before, the preacher emphasized that we need to spend time in prayer. This is our opportunity. Why don't you come pray? Pray. Pray for your church. Pray for our city. Pray for our country. Pray for lost souls that need the gospel. Maybe the Holy Spirit of God convicted you tonight, specifically spoke to your heart about a few things. Why don't you come and do business with the Lord tonight? I promise you this, you'll not regret obeying God. God spoke to your heart, you come. And you'll be glad to leave saying, I did what God asked me to do. What about it? The altar is open this evening, you come. I wonder if you know someone tonight that's not saved. I mean, if they were to die right now, while you stand where you stand, they'd go to hell. All of us know somebody like that, but let me ask you this. When's the last time you prayed for their soul? I mean, you really begged God to do a work in their life to save them. I wonder if you'd step out now and come pray for a lost person that you want to see get saved. Now, you might pray and they might not get saved, but at least you're able to stay, stand at the judgment seat and say, you know what, I prayed for their soul. If you have someone like that, you come. That's good, you come. Altar's still open. Still time to come. Honestly, this is the most important thing we do when we come to church. After we hear the Word of God is responding to how God spoke to us. An invitation, most important time. Folks are praying. I'll pray here. You pray in your, in your pew. If you're down here kneeling, you stay there and pray as long as you need to. If you need to still come, you can step out and come as I pray. Some folks are still making their way down. That's fine. Lord, I pray that you please bless our invitation tonight. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the scriptures that were given tonight and the truth that was presented. Thank you for speaking to us. Lord, I'm glad that you still speak to us in these days. I pray that we wouldn't silence your voice, that we wouldn't shun your voice, that we wouldn't close our ears nor our heart to your voice. I pray you'd help us to respond to the word of God. Help us to guard our words. Help us to guard our eyes. Help us to guard our ears, our mind. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.